So today I'm going to share with you how you can transition from your nine to five or your corporate job when you know you are meant for something more. When you start to feel that call, you may be able to recognize and relate to how, how suffocating it can feel to be tr quote unquote, I'm using air quotes here if you're listening on this podcast, um, quote unquote trapped in what it is that you're doing uh, for a career, right? When you're being called to start your spiritual business, right? And you want to move more fully into that and you want to break out of the matrix job that you've been stuck in. And so it can feel very restrictive. It can feel very constricting. And the, the urge to do that only gets louder and louder, right? Stronger and stronger. The calling gets louder and louder. And so I can say that I am a risk taker by nature. And oftentimes this serves me. And sometimes it sort of um, comes back to bite me a little bit because the net doesn't always catch me exactly where I would have hoped it would catch me. And this is largely due to the fear around the actions that I was taking to begin with. So there were several attempts that I had made to burn the boat, so to speak, to my real estate career. But each time an attempt that I did that in the past, I, um, I was doing it because I was trying to escape a situation from a place of fear, or from a place of lack, or from a place of, you know, you know, really using like, um, this sense of uh, desperation almost around it. And what happened was every time I did that, I would make an attempt to leave real estate and I would, you know, manifest less clients. I would stop taking action, but I wasn't fully stepping into my mission work either. And I wasn't really fully committed and I didn't really have a lot of faith or trust around the fact that I would be supported in what I was really called to do. So what would happen is I would leave my real estate career. I would manifest less clients and I would stop taking action there, but I wouldn't really fully show up for myself on the other end of the spectrum in my spiritual business. And so what would happen is that the net caught me, of course, I'm still here, right? And I wouldn't replace any of my experiences. They've all been great learning experiences. Um, I don't have any regrets, but in hindsight, it could have happened much smoother and much differently. Because every time I jumped ship and burned the boat or attempted to burn the boat, I was doing it from a place of fear. And so the net caught me at that frequency. And so... I wanted to share with you what happened, you know, right when quarantine hit, right when quarantine hit and we went into lockdown and people were losing their jobs and there was a global uncertainty everywhere and the, the um, unemployment rate was spiking um, and there was just so much uncertainty and fear. It varied to, you know, it varied person to person, but it didn't make logical sense at that point to uh, invest in business when so many businesses were failing and people were just like scouring the supermarkets, hoarding food. It didn't make sense or logical sense to double down on my business. But at that point, that's when I said enough was enough. That's when I decided to cut all the bullshit. That's when I decided to take action towards my dreams and double down on my mission and commit to my calling. And I asked my God guides, angels, universe, all it is, whatever you want to refer to it as. I said, please show me my next steps. Let it be so clear that real estate is not part of my path anymore. Let it be so obvious that I can just walk away from it easy breezy and never look back. Let it become so obvious. And I called in my next mentor. My next mentor appeared. I took action and hired him on the phone. I doubled down on my business in the midst of a global pandemic when it didn't make any logical sense to be doing that and launched my new program that I've been sitting on for years um, within a couple of months and within um, 
a week and a half of launching that already made five figures in my business, right? And then I was off to the races from then on, right? I remember looking back at my real estate board right when I doubled down and invested in my mentor and just cut the bullshit and decided to take action on my dreams despite the fear. It was almost that the fear dissipated at that point because I was filled with so much trust and faith, right? But I remember looking at my real estate board and I said, that's going to be the last deal I ever do. And it was. And fast forward a few weeks from there, and I was already making five figures in my in my spiritual business. And then went on to hit multiple five-figure months and 20K months and all that stuff, right? And just continuing to scale and grow from that point. And when I made that decision, it wasn't coming from a place of fear. It was coming from a place of certainty. It was coming from a place of faith and trust and knowingness. It was coming from a place of me being so committed to my next step, to my calling, to my mission, to being of service, to my dreams that have been sitting there on the sidelines as a side hustle for years. And in hindsight, it's all perfect, right? Like I said, no regrets. But at that point, I made a decision. And in that decision, it was almost like the fear just dissipated anyways and was replaced with faith and was replaced with trust. And then one little thing needs leads to the next, one little spiritual breadcrumb leads to the next. I just kept taking little baby actions and big actions and everything in between. And like I said, within a couple of months, I've launched my new program, which I've been sitting on that has been in my journal for a year and a half at that point. And was able to hit the ground running with my new spiritual business and never look back. And that was the last deal on the board that I ever did. And it just phased out. It was easy. It was effortless. You know, it was just the logical next step, just like I had asked for. It became so obvious because I started making more in my spiritual business than I was in my real estate job that it made absolutely no sense for me to continue to put any energy in real estate when I was already making more in my spiritual business. The universe made it obvious, just like I asked because I was committed and I surrendered to the, the, the mission and the calling and, and stayed committed to that and just dropped the need to control and dropped all the what ifs, all the doubts and all the fears, all the little things that pop up that say, well, what if I invest and I double down with this mentor and it doesn't work or I invest here and it doesn't work or I take this action and it doesn't materialize and what if I look stupid or I fail or I quit and then I have to go back to real estate again because that's what history has shown me every time I attempted to jump ship that's what had that's what was shown to me is that I had to go back to real estate and I had to just, you know pound the pavement with real estate uh, for another six months or a year before I would get so sick of it again before I attempted it again and so that was the history if I would have allowed myself to believe in the past repeating itself, I would have never pulled the trigger. If I would have bought into what has been shown to me in the past, I would have never pulled the trigger. The self-doubt, the what ifs, the imposter syndrome, the fear, like all of it. If I would have bought into those stories, I never would have pulled the trigger, right? I had to just make a decision that things were gonna be different. And then I took action from that place with faith. I didn't see the results first. I didn't have any certainty that anything was gonna work out in my favor. I had no clear um, signs or signals that you know any of it was gonna work out. But in full faith and trust and knowing I was willing and able to take that step and double down on my dreams and my business and take action before anything manifested that would prove that this would work. In fact, the only thing that was manifesting in my experience, even though I didn't really have any innate fear to it, was that I saw the, you know, uh, unemployment rate spiking and businesses going out of business and people running around in fear doing a lot of things that were so unprecedented that um, there could have been a million reasons and excuses in that moment not to pull the trigger. And I say this because I know right now, if you're resonating with this, there's excuses that you're waiting on right now to pull the trigger and I hear them all the time. 
well, maybe I should wait until my kids are in school, or maybe I should wait till my kids are out of school, or maybe I should wait until I'm more stable, or maybe I should wait until I have money or more money, or maybe I should wait till this or that, you know? If you're using excuses outside of yourself to hold yourself hostage to the situation that you're in, then you're going to be stuck in the situation that you're in for the rest of your life because there will always be another excuse. There will always be another reason. And that reason will could really look really logical to you and really rational to you, right? It can seem really reasonable to your mind and your ego knows that. Your ego knows that and your ego doesn't want you to move forward on your mission and step into more service in your spiritual business because in order to progress in your spiritual business, you're going to be ascending even more on your own journey and that means certain death to your ego. Anytime you step more fully into your purpose and what your soul is calling you to do, it means certain death to your ego because you're going to be challenged as you go through your spiritual business to confront these doubts and fears and these illusions that are around you over and over and over again so you can come more into alignment with who you truly are and that means certain death to your ego and so there's going to be a million rational and reasonable and logical excuses that keep you stuck i hear them all the time and I say this with love when I say that if you don't break the cycle and take action through faith and trust, you're going to be stuck in that cycle forever. This is something that it requires action on your part and not fear-based action. Like when I sh shared with you earlier on, when I tried to quit my career, um, leave my real estate career several times and burn the boat when I was coming from a place of fear and I did not yet trust in what I was really truly called to do. And I did not yet really trust in my mission. I did not have faith in that yet, right? And so I recommend if you want to make a smoother transition to maybe learn from my mistake of what I'm sharing with you right now. And it's not a quote unquote mistake, right? I don't believe in those, but I'm just sharing my experience because I know it could help you fast track your results, right? And I want to help you fast track your results. And so you are able to learn from other people's quote unquote mistakes. You don't have to make them all yourself unless you want to. And if you want to, that's fine too. I'll still be here when you're ready. But if you want to fast track your results, connect with your why, connect why you're doing what you're doing, connect with the calling that is bubbling up within you, connect with the mission, connect with the message that you're here to share, connect with the fact that you know that you are a spark of creation, that you are a spiritual being having a physical experience and that what you have to share and the message that you have to share is not only important and not only 100% necessary, but is your responsibility to share it. Take ownership of this, move into this with commitment and consistency and courage and show up for yourself over and over and over again by taking the scary actions. The scary actions that are intuitively guided, I call sacred actions because those are going to be the ones that move the needle. And you don't need everything to look perfect and you don't need the perfect circumstance and you don't need to wait till you have more money and you don't need to wait till your kids go to school or get out of school or or whatever and you don't need to move and wait until you're you're you know, you're done moving your house or this or that. There's always going to be a reason. You just have to decide. You just have to decide now that you're all in, you're committed, and you're done with the bullshit. And you have to recognize the fear in the moment it presents itself and the doubt and the limited beliefs that are, you know, playing on autopilot with your self-talk. And you need to say enough is enough and pull the trigger. And just get out of your comfort zone with what you normally would do. You have to be so sick of your own excuses that you finally just say fuck it and you just make the decision right so i wanted to share this with you because this is truly truly how you're going to be able to transition out of your corporate position or your nine to five more easily and effortlessly you don't have to crash and burn and go back to a day job like i did for several years 
you know, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, one foot in my, you know, real estate career and one foot in my spiritual business, but never fully committed to either splitting my energy right down the middle and getting mediocre results in both. And then I would, I would teeter towards the one, you know, obviously back to the real estate career because it was providing me with the financial security, right? But there were so many ideas in real estate. I could turn my real estate business up a million notches and crank it up and make so much more money than I was making in it if I wanted to, but I didn't have the desire to, so I wouldn't implement that marketing campaign. I wouldn't go do the extras that I know I could do because I really have, being a visionary is one of my great strengths and I can see how to quickly like turn something in and amp it up, right? I can see the bigger picture and align with it very quickly, but I had no desire to. And so my real estate business was, yeah, providing security and financial stability, but it could have been way bigger and better, right? My spiritual business was only getting my side energy, you know, even though it was what I was passionate about and what I was being called to create, I would constantly be playing a tug of war between these two worlds and splitting my energy right down the center, right? And therefore getting mediocre results in both of them until I finally just cut the BS and committed and made a decision. And this decision is not coming from a place of fear. It's coming from a place of faith. And this is the difference. This is the discerning difference that when you know you're fully supported and you finally can trust that what you're called to create in this world is important to share and that your message is meant to be heard and that your existence in this world is not insignificant and you're here to tap into what you're really feeling called to do. The sooner you accept that, the sooner you can allow it to happen into your experience. And for a long time, I used my real estate business as a crutch, right? I would use it as a crutch because I could go back to it and know that it could provide for me because I was really good at sales, entrepreneurship, helping people, right? It was right up my alley with a lot of my skills, but it wasn't my calling. It wasn't truly my gift. I was just really masterful at it and really skillful at it, but it wasn't really what was lighting me up at the end of the day. I knew I was meant to serve in a much bigger way than just continue to sell pretty houses. And so I'm just asking you to check in with yourself, whether you're watching this on the video or listening on in listening to this on the podcast, check in with yourself and ask, what are you using as a crutch? What story are you using as a crutch? What are you using as an excuse, a justification? Look for where you're justifying. Look for where you're making justifying excuses or defending excuses of why it's okay to stay exactly where you're at. Look at where you're defending your situation to keep it exactly where it is right now, even though your heart is calling to you ex to expand so much further than that, right? So check in with yourself and be honest with yourself and, you know, ask for your next steps, ask for your next sign, and then take action on that. You are here co-creating with the universe. Your consciousness creates your reality. You are part of all that is, and you have un infinite support behind you in what you're feeling called to do. This is your divine plan. You are 100% supported, but you need to know that, believe in it, trust in it, know it in your heart of hearts, and feel that, and have faith in that. And when you do, and then you attempt to leave or you leave your current position, the path will unfold for you in a very synchronistic, um, effortless, easy way. But it is not without you taking action through the fear because it is 100% getting you out of your comfort zone, out of your bubble, out of your you know, safety net out of your security, you know, your, your position, wherever you're at, nine to five, your corporate job, whatever that is, it's getting you out of that. Even if you don't like it. And even though you consciously think you want to leave it, as soon as you start to take steps to get out of it, boom, ego, doubt, all the fears, all the limited stories, all the justifications, all the excuses and everything's going to bubble up. You have to be able to recognize that 
and cut the BS. Just cut it right off the top and just look more clearly at what's really happening and start to take decisions, make decisions, sorry, make decisions that are um, coming from this inner place of certainty of what you're available for and what you're no longer available for. When you're willing to walk away from what you're not available for anymore and create that space, the universe is going to fill it. And the universe is going to fill it based on where you're at with your own frequency and your own uh, vibration and what you're, what you're allowing. And so I hope this uh, video finds you well. Again, you could be listening to this on the podcast. I hope it finds you, this finds you well wherever you're tuning in. And um, I would love, love, love to um, invite you to watch my free masterclass, the Soul Align Success Masterclass that you can find wherever you're watching or listening to this. And if that masterclass resonates with you, then go ahead and apply to hop on a free strategy call with me. So I hope this finds you well. Until next time. Namaste.